Hi. Bye. Bye. Uh, uh, bye. Bye. Hi guys, welcome back to Too Cool for Middle School. I feel like I'm being like surrounded by books in the viewfinder here, which is kind of true. I am I am surrounded by books over here. With each video, I feel like I've got more and more books surrounding me, but one of these days I will I will organize this and clean it out. <laughs> but in the meantime, I just wanted to sit down and do a little chatty video today. I've been noticing a little bit of a trend in the teaching world and kind of like the teacher social media world that I thought we would talk about today. I want to talk about teachers who are introverts and this might be a little bit of a weird video for me because I'm pretty extroverted. I like to talk, I like to be around people, I'm not shy in front of people, I don't really get nervous in front of crowds, I'm willing to do kind of crazy things in front of my students. For me, extroversion is just kind of where I operate. I'm also super independent though so I don't need to always have people around me and if I want to do something and someone else doesn't want to do it with me that's fine I just do it by myself so I definitely spend a lot of time alone as well just because I like to get things done but I've taken like the Myers-Briggs personality test a couple of times and I'm I usually lean toward the extroverted side and honestly that helps me in teaching but I'm not sure if it always should so here's what I've been thinking about Lately, kind of in like social media or books that are published about teachers, a lot of the emphasis is placed on like really shocking your students or, um, you know, like getting up on tables and dancing and kind of bringing in music and jokes. And I'm totally cool with that. I totally support that. And I think it's really fun. And I have no problem with that. But I was just thinking. If you are more of an introverted person and you're watching all of these people on like Instagram or maybe YouTube or on like talk shows even who are teachers and they're super outgoing and they're super like kind of crazy and high energy and just really really fun and those are the type of people that are kind of being marketed as like the very best kind of teacher that could be really intimidating and really um, like defeating like if you know that's never gonna be you you're never gonna jump on tables and sing and the messaging that you're getting is that's the only way to be a good teacher that could be really hard my very extroverted son is also over there playing really loud games so just try and ignore the background sounds so again I want to emphasize that I too am extroverted and I really love all of the cool things that are going on in classrooms all around the United States I just don't think that's the only way and I think we need to put a little bit more emphasis on a more like diverse range of teachers like a more diverse personality range of teachers as this was you know just kind of going on in my mind it reminded me of this book that I read before I got my first teaching job it's called quiet by Susan Cain and it really changed my worldview and changed my life a little bit the subtitle is the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking and Susan Cain herself is an introvert and she just kind of covers the the cultural development of this extroverted ideal in the United States. And she kind of traces it back to the Industrial Revolution and how before that, when people lived mostly in farms and like small villages, the people that you knew and interacted with, you had known your entire life, your families had known each other their entire lives. You didn't need to have this like outgoing personality in order to forge communal bonds with people wasn't really based on your personality. But with the advent of the Industrial Revolution and so many more people moving into cities, you were meeting so many more strangers and you had to find a way to kind of get a leg up on the next guy. Um, a lot of sales jobs were being like developed and kind of invented at this time, like the door-to-door -door salesman. And so this is where we kind of get this cult of personality type of a phenomena. And in American culture, we just we just ran with that. We are all about, you know, being pioneers and being forward thinking and kind of taking what you want and not being hesitant, not being 
quiet. We tend to view people who are quiet as like less intelligent or less driven and that just isn't accurate. So what I like about this book is that it goes into the the power of being introverted, the power of being more of a thinker than a you know instant doer somebody that just rushes ahead and does things without really thinking and that can be me quite often and it really doesn't always work out so this book isn't about teaching but i just felt like it really applied to the way that i interact with my students and the way that i interact with my co-workers so um she she writes about things like these workplaces like these open workplaces you know where people um in mostly like in corporate america like got rid of cubicles and got rid of offices and they just have people out in one big workspace and sometimes that really fosters like collaboration and creativity but some people just really need quiet and they need some space alone in order for their brain to really work optimally and to really come up with their best ideas. I also really like this comparison between Franklin Roosevelt and Eleanor Roosevelt and Eleanor was more introverted but she came up with the really good ideas. One really interesting section for me also is called Soft Power Asian Americans and the Extrovert Ideal. The community that I work in is primarily Asians from China and Taiwan and tons of my students are really extroverted and like really loud but initially I would assume that like when their parents moved here or maybe grandparents they were probably quite overwhelmed by our education system and that's what that whole chapter is about even um, people coming from China for like college or graduate programs and just being so shocked by how much we value talking even when people aren't saying anything useful so the author interviews quite a few Chinese like exchange students or people that just moved here and in China a lot of their values are placed on being quiet, being thoughtful, not speaking until you are ready and you have something really important to say. But here we see talking as always a positive. If you are talking, you are building relationships, you're thinking out loud, and we just have to be aware that not everyone feels that way. Not every culture values talking the way that we do. So these students would come here and they would just be shocked that students would speak while the professor was speaking and they were just like, we're supposed to be here listening like we don't have anything to add to the conversation. We shouldn't be talking. We need to be you know, just gaining information from the professor. Why would you talk? But then professors and other students started to see them as like disengaged or unfriendly or um, assumed that they didn't have anything to add to the conversation and, and that they weren't as intelligent. So this cultural difference really kind of drove a wedge in between introverts and extroverts and really placed a value on extroverts. And I just loved how one of the, the people that she was interviewing said, like a lot of these students, and they're in college, didn't have anything useful to say, but the professors would just light up whenever students would engage in conversation and participate in class. And you know, in most college classes that I took, like participation was part of your grade and you had to make at least a couple of comments per class. But it's definitely true that <laughs> a lot of people speaking up, myself included, didn't have anything useful to add to the conversation. We just needed to say something. How cute! Yeah! Thank you! Jensen just brought this to me <laughs> and said, how cute! Yeah, turtle! You're right! Anyway, I found this book very interesting. Um, it is not particularly about education, but I just feel like it really applies to teachers and it really got me thinking about my students who are introverted because you're always going to have introverted students in your classes and they might have other ways of showing their knowledge and other ways of like forging relationships with people and just because they don't talk doesn't mean they don't like you it doesn't mean they don't like others it doesn't mean they have nothing to say and I need to be aware of that in my teaching so I think this also applies to our co-workers as well because in basically everywhere that I've worked the teachers who are more extroverted and have you know, more like charismatic personalities. They tend to be 
kind of the leaders and you assume that they are good teachers and they are forming relationships with their students. But we just need to make sure that we are not writing off these teachers who are quieter and who are more introverted because they form great relationships with their students too and they have something to add to the classroom that sometimes extroverted teachers don't. I posted about this on Instagram and I've got 20 comments here asking, I had asked introverted teachers what they wished that people understood about their teaching. And so many people said things like this, I'm an introvert and I often find most teaching strategies are catered to extroverts. I think it is so important to start this conversation and to start to think of ways we can cater to all personality types while helping our students grow as individuals. Another teacher said, I wish my quiet and calm classroom was seen more as a positive than a negative. People think she must be hyper controlling. I have team teachers that are more extroverted and love a lively and boisterous classroom, but I like a quiet classroom while we're working and thinking and collaborating. I feel like I should be seen more like the balance in the equation where my teammates are so talkative and loud, we complement each other and allow for the needs of all students. I also wish we somehow magically had a little teacher and student downtime between classes to refocus, regroup, and unpeople for a few minutes. I think that's such a great way to say it. To unpeople, that's so funny. I wanna say that all the time now. Another teacher said, I wish other people understood that there's power in observing and processing. God, I get no. teased all the time for being so quiet in groups, but I have the greatest conversations one-on-one. -on -one. I think this is so powerful for students, especially the ones who long to be seen and understood. However, I do find myself falling into that collaborative hype, so it's so good. Um, it's a good reminder to make space for my introverted students. A couple of other teachers mentioned how like they are able to form these close bonds with a lot of their students who are also more introverted, whereas the extroverted teachers might like ignore those students and never form those deep bonds. Other teachers also talked about being overlooked for leadership potential just because they aren't the really outgoing extroverted type, but they might be able to see those details that sometimes more extroverted leaders miss. And that's kind of a whole other conversation, but leadership doesn't necessarily mean people who are super outgoing and talk a lot. You can be a quiet and effective leader. So I just think that in education in general, we need to make sure that we're not overlooking those quieter teachers and assuming that they aren't doing amazing things in their classes. And we need to make sure not to overlook them for leadership potential. This has just kind of all been tying in with everything that I've been reading lately. So I also picked up Teach Like Finland by Timothy Walker. And one of the ladies commented, you know, I wish we had more time in between classes to just decompress and unpeople. <laughs> and that's exactly what they do in Finland. They always have 15 minute breaks in between classes. And maybe that's part of why I'm sure that the, the like scale of extroverted and introvertedness in Finland leans more toward the introverted side than it does in the United States. And a lot of what this book talks about is, is like calmer working environments, like more joyful, less stressed out teachers. Um, it does really emphasize collaboration, but in, in a much more calm way, like during those 15 minute breaks, over coffee, just talking with one or two teachers about something that you could collaborate on or a student that all three of you have or the two of you have. It's, it's a system, I think, that's a little bit more geared towards introverts as opposed to the U.S. system that is definitely geared toward extroverts. And Finland has the highest scores right now. Their education system is producing students that score the highest on math and science and reading tests. So we have something to learn from them for sure. And they take a lot from the United States and there's a lot that the US is doing that's really good I think um, with like speaking and listening and getting students to collaborate and it is helpful sometimes to, to speak out loud before you have to write or whatever. I do think all of that is good but we just can't deny that other people do things different ways and sometimes it really works. So these are two books that I would highly recommend. For one, if you are more introverted because these will just really validate everything that you already do. But then also for more extroverted teachers like me because you need to understand 
the value of being quiet sometimes and of your more introverted coworkers and students. Lastly, I just wanted to end with a little example of this. So last year was my first year in my new district and it was my first year teaching the Read 180 class, which is my students were like ELD3. So they spoke English pretty well, but they needed to go a little bit slower and just have a little bit more um, support in some of the, of the vocabulary and stuff like that. I'm not a slow person. Nothing that I do is slow. I like to get things done. I like to knock things out. I'm a little bit intense and hyper in everything that I do. And that includes teaching. And I just kind of like keep things going. I, I push kids. I want them to, to get stuff done. And for a lot of students, I think that that works well. But in this particular class, I think it was really overwhelming for a lot of my students. So I was working with um, a, a coach or like a TOSA, you know, the people in your district, the teachers that have left the classroom, but then they're there to support other teachers. And her personality for sure was more introverted. She's very friendly, very, very nice. But I noticed even just with my interactions with her, she listened so much better than I do. She didn't speak as much as I assumed that she was going to. I thought she was going to be like full of advice and always telling me what to do. But most of the time she just listened to whatever my concerns were and she would get back to me later with her ideas about how we could address those problems. I usually don't work with people like that and it was so refreshing. I was like, wow, this is this is a really cool way to do this. It was less stressful for me and I really felt heard and listened to. And then one day um, she was saying that if I didn't mind, she could come in and, and just teach a sample lesson for me. Uh, it was getting close to state testing and she had some good strategies for how to do test prep. And she thought she might just show me how to do them with my students and I was like sure that'd be great come on in so she came in and had this lesson ready and she's teaching my students and she goes so much slower than I do she's so much more calm she gives them so much more think time she waits on their responses she doesn't stress them out she used our time well but it was it was so different from how I teach and I watched my students like anxiety just kind of like and they knew that they were gonna get time to think about their answer they knew that they would have time to write things down. Just the whole mood was so different than the way that I usually do things. So she didn't even have to tell me anything about, you know, the way that, that I teach and the environment that I sometimes create by being a little bit more hyper and quick. But I was able to see it with my own eyes and just see these students, they needed a little bit more rest, a little bit more calm, a little bit more support by way of quieter questioning and answers and I don't I don't think she had them talk to each other as much as I usually do but they they still did like kind of do turn and talk strategies and they would they would write things down they did a lot of brainstorming but the lesson went so well and I'll never forget just realizing that there are other ways to do things and sometimes you really need to gauge your students and see what they need from you. And in this book, In Quiet, she talks about how a lot of introverts, in order to survive basically, have to act more extroverted than they are sometimes. So just because you are introverted or extroverted doesn't mean that you never um, are friendly or you are never quiet or you know that that you can't kind of shift in and out of those realms a little bit and so it's the same way for for people who are extroverted you can still be calm you can still be quieter and you know what I can even jump in and out of those realms a little bit depending on the class that I have if my third period needs a little bit more quiet and less like constant babbling from me, <laughs> but my fourth period kind of needs me to be questioning them and generating um, answers and questions and discussions and that's how they thrive, then great. But I need to be aware enough of like the culture within each of my classes and um, aware enough even of like individual students to know how to communicate with them and what kind of a vibe to set. So clearly I can talk forever. I'm gonna shut myself down now <laughs> and give you some time to reflect on this and think about this. 
I will link both of these books below because I think that they're both really useful for teachers or for administrators and they've changed my thinking and my teaching quite a bit. So introverted teachers, just know that your personality is valued, your strengths are real. It might be harder to make those things show through on Instagram or in a staff meeting, but you are making a difference with your students, you're making a difference in your school, and we are so glad that you do what you do. And if you are thinking about becoming a teacher and you have a little bit of anxiety about it because you're not sure if your more introverted personality is up to the challenge, it is. As long as you have passion and you have the skills to teach, your personality will serve you no matter what and it will serve your students. So just be who you are. Don't worry about changing your personality depending on your school. Be true to yourself. We need a healthy mix of both of these kinds of personalities and even the people that are kind of in between. We need all of us because our students are a mix of all of those personality types as well. So thank you so much for watching this today, guys, and I hope that this has been helpful in some way. I'll see you next time. Bye.